Welcome to another episode of Jamaica Magazine. This is the program with the information you need. We have lots in store for you today. We taught the Grade 6 Achievement Test GSAT. That's on for this Thursday and Friday, and we have ideas for getting children and parents prepared. Then later, work is being done to increase the country's earnings from a medical tourism industry. Those are just a few of the features we have lined up for you. So stick with us. Parents, did you know your involvement can make a difference in your child's education? Yes, by simply checking on their progress with teachers, assisting with homework, and playing a part in the school community, children are encouraged to do well. All the studies show that parental involvement with their children in school leads to success. And there's no other way. Parents must take the time. Chief Education Officer Dr. Grace McLean is our guest this week on Issues and Answers. She provides a timely update on the Grade 6 Achievement Test set to happen later this week. Watch this. Thanks for joining us for Issues and Answers. I'm Ian Boyne. This is a week for GSAT. It's usually a period of, uh, of tension. For, for, for both parents and uh, students. It needn't be as much of a time of, uh, of tension. And in fact, we have with us today the Chief Education Officer, Dr. Grace uh, McLean. And she'll be giving us more information about this important exam and also important advice, um, how to approach the exam with the, um, the best attitudes and how to get the most out of it. We thank you as usual for your company. Dr. McLean, good to have you on the program. So thank it's, you, it's a big sir. week for, for, for many students, for, for, for many parents. Um, what are the critical things to, to bear in mind? Well, if I could just provide just some general information. information we have over 39,000 of our grade six students who will be sitting the GSAT. Uh, in approximately 1,090 centers. Uh, we have already dispatched timetables to the schools. We have also started the preparation of our presiding examiners as well as our invigilators. And we expect to have all the papers dispatched and be ready within the centers for our students to sit their exams on Thursday and Friday. And the important things that um, the parent should look out for, uh, should ensure? Yes, it's very important for the next uh, three or so days that our parents and our teachers as well try to keep our students calm. They would have been preparing themselves over the last uh, three years. Mm -hmm. And I know certainly within the last year, they would have done a lot of practice. They would have tried to consolidate the concepts. And so within the next three days, it is very important that we try to keep them calm. Try to allow them to do fun things. Try mm -hmm. to allow them to focus on other things within their childhood as against focusing on the examination itself. And this is very important because you do not want to build up a lot of pressure and a lot of anxiety to the point where they are not able to remember the concepts and the principles. It is also very important that our students understand that the examination is not going to be only about recalling in terms of what they would have done on practice papers. It will be about their ability to read the questions carefully, to analyze the answer, the, the, the responses, and to make a determination as to which is the best response at a particular for a particular question. And so it is not about trying to identify some keywords that you see in a question and immediately move to an answer, but it is to think critically. Sometimes we make the mistake that because they are 
multiple choice questions, they are only recall questions, but that is not so. These questions will stimulate the student's thought so that they can break down the question, determine exactly what is being asked, and as a result of that determination, then they select the best answer. It is also very, very important, Ian, that our students relax as much as possible mm -hmm. because they are very young. Sometimes when they see keywords that they would have seen or questions that look similar, they have the tendency to just move to the answer. And once they move to the answer, then they move over to the answer sheet to do the shading. It is critical that they make sure that they match the questions on the question booklet with the 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 answers or the quest the 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 questions on the answer sheet so for example science goes from 1 to 60 and you are going to be shading in each question you are it's very important that they ensure that question 1 is shaded in the correct bubble for question 1 and that should carry through right through to the 60th question this can be proved to be very dangerous if a student should miss one question. Let's say you miss question four and you place that answer, let's say, in question five. Then it simply means that it's going to throw off all your questions. So there has to be effective eye and hand coordination. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, they must ensure that they are shading in the best possible answers. It's very critical, Ian, that parents, for example, get the students to understand that sometimes it is not even about the amount of content that they know. It's about the techniques that are used within the examination. Mm -hmm. And over time, when we do our analysis of the question papers, mm -hmm. these are some of the challenges where we see students who would have otherwise gotten well. very, very good grades because mm -hmm. of the techniques that they use in terms of responding to the questions, then they would not have done very well. Good. Expert advice, uh, key techniques being given on the eve, uh, as it were, of, of GSAT. That's why you need to uh, stay tuned to us here. You have the, the use of uh, friendly information. Chief Education Officer Dr. Grace McLean talking to us about the GSAT and helping us to prepare better for it. We take a break, but we'll be right back. I'm young, gifted, and balance free. I will stand up for peace. No matter what you say, you can't take that away. I'm young, gifted, and balance free. I choose to live. I choose to be me. Chief Education Officer in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, Dr. Grace McLean, talking to us about the upcoming uh, GSAT examinations and giving us some really critical um, techniques as to how to do better. It's so good to have a, a, a ministry official actually giving guidance uh, on, on, on how students can do better and you know what you as parents can do to prepare your children for the exams. Um, uh, very useful. Any other, any other tips? <laughs> well, yes, and of course, we have been sending out quite a few in the media, but I will uh -huh. mention a few other. But let me just touch a little, Ian, on our special needs students mm -hmm. who we consider to be just as important as the others. We have over 230 of these students who have requested what we call special accommodation. Okay. Uh, special accommodation means that they need some kind of support to assist them in being able to complete the examinations. Uh, accommodation include needing somebody who can read the questions or who has to do the shading in while they, they read and decide what the answers mm -hmm. are. Uh, special accommodation could also mean that they, they have to take frequent breaks and somebody has to monitor, take them to the mm -hmm. restroom and so on. Mm -hmm. Of course, the accommodation is granted based on a report that we get from the doctor to indicate the nature of the special needs. So, so and that so it report is, has to come in? That report has to come in. It is analyzed by our special 
our special needs education officers and a determination need as to what is the be determination made as to the best support that will assist that student. There are also too late now to I would uh, no child should be disadvantaged yes. when it yes. comes to a uh, sitting of examinations mm -hmm. or any other educational opportunities. Yes. And though on the books we would yes. say that it is too late, I am still encouraging our yes. parents and our teachers that if you have not yet mm -hmm. uh, taken in the reports for the special accommodation, then you should do so Let's now. Take where? Uh, it is actually taken to the regional offices regional. across the island, okay. and those are sent into Central where we do okay. the assessment. Mm -hmm. It's important for us to do do so at least two, at least no later than Wednesday or no later than Tuesday, yes, rather, yes, sure. because we have to assess the situation and ensure that the support that is being provided That's is right. applicable Adequate. to that particular mm -hmm. student. So again, we do not want any of our students to be disadvantaged. In addition to that, from year to year, we find that there are some students who are just not registered. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they are just not, not registered. registered. We call them turnips. Uh, we mm -hmm. can't say how many of them are going to be turning up. But I am appealing to our parents and our teachers, if there are any such cases, there are set procedures. We ask that we do not disadvantage the students. Mm -hmm. Let us give them a fighting chance. So mm -hmm. if there are those who are out there who have not been registered, who have not received any timetables, we still need to get that information. And if so they turn up- ensure that yes. the, the students are registered. Are they registered. Just assume. They should not just assume. And that is why after, after the, the exam becomes the topical thing that is taking yeah. place in the communities, you'll find that some students will just turn up for the exam. Mm -hmm. But I want to assure our parents that the Ministry of Education is catering to all our students, our grade six students, and so if they turn up, we will try as best as possible to accommodate them. I also want to indicate that uh, the Examination is a very serious activity. Mm -hmm. And parents should not only seek to support their children for the two day of exams, two days of exams, they should do it around the well, right through their lives. Mm -hmm. And so we are asking our parents not to congregate at the examination centers on the morning of the exams. You take in the children, you allow them to go to the examinations, um, examination rooms and you go on your way to work or your business. It's not a very good practice. It builds up the anxiety mm -hmm. and it also creates a lot of logistical challenges for the teachers themselves who must make sure that things are organized mm -hmm. and coordinated in a particular way where the students can be settled quickly and they can go through that process. I do not have to remind our parents that they should ensure that their ch their students sleep well, children mm -hmm. sleep well the night before, mm -hmm. ensure that they have a very good breakfast, do not overeat, mm -hmm. but just enough, and just to ensure that they have the correct tools, they will need their pencil, I normally refer to the HB, number two pencil, which works very well, you do not have to press too much, and it, it shades very well, mm -hmm. and also just to remind our students not to have any stray marks on the answer sheets. Uh, the stray marks sometimes will be picked up by the scanners when we are scanning those answer sheets. And depending on where those marks are, the scanner may just pick up that mark mm -hmm. and not the correct answer. And so it's important that they do not do any kind of rough work on the answer sheet itself, the answer sheets are already pre-slugged, meaning that the information is already on the answer sheets. So all they need to do will be to shade in the correct answers. And so Ian, if our students uh, follow these basic okay. tips, and if they just refocus their minds, see it as a part of the growing up process, I am sure they are all going to be doing very well in their examinations. And of course, after, Thursday and Friday, they will at least have a little break as they Good. await the results. Great. The always lucid Chief Education Officer, Dr. Grace McLean.
spending time with us on issues and answers, helping us to prepare our children and to give guidance to our children for the upcoming GSAT examinations. We thank you for your company. Until next week, Ian Boy wishing you a pleasant day. The business process outsourcing DPO sector, employing more than 6,000 Jamaicans, putting the youth at work. The kinds of work we are doing right now in Jamaica through our 40 companies established in this industry include applications like Netflix, applications like Amazon, so you're speaking to people about their credit cards. We are doing applications like tech support, so if you have a problem with your your um, iPhone, iMac or laptop, technical questions, those questions are being answered in some of our BPO operations. That's not a sweatshop. Humana has over 400 agents here that when people call the US to query about their health plan, those calls are being handled in Jamaica. <laughs> that's not blowing, that's not, you're working for one of the largest healthcare companies in the world. The local BPO industry, creating employment, boosting the economy. A nutraceutical sector, qualified doctors, and a world-class medical facility. With these and other elements, Jamaica has the potential of becoming a top contender in the area of medical tourism. Take a look as we seek to reap tangible benefits from this industry. What we are looking at is a framework that will establish Jamaica as a medical tourism destination, including how do we work with a JTB to ensure that Jamaica starts being marketed as a medical tourism destination. The opportunity we see is in a range of different treatments, surgical treatment, medical diagnostics, dentistry. That is actually already happening. I'm sure the dentists among you will already be seeing patients from the diaspora who come down here and while they're visiting friends and family decide to have um, dental treatment and that is certainly one of the low hanging fruit. Big abroad in sports, music, food and the newest kid on the block that has the world looking to jam down is medical tourism. Essentially moving people and typically it's from more developed countries to less developed countries to access health care at an affordable cost but still high in quality. Which is really about people actively traveling to another country to seek medical help or medical treatments. Now it's not so much about um, people coming here and while they're here having a treatment, it's really about the whole structure of um, a travel industry that is set up to promote people traveling overseas. So if you want to have a hip replacement, you actually go to a travel agent in the US, usually, or in the UK or Canada, wherever, and you say, where can I have my hip replacement done? And they'll give you a list of five or six countries and say, okay, this is what it costs in these countries. So there's a whole superstructure that's set up to promote this. <laughs> The government has implemented a number of policies to spur growth in this sector. The National Steering Committee on Health and Wellness Tourism, with its secretariat based at JAMPRO, looks at accreditation, regulation and a marketing framework for the sector. The National Standard for SPAS was developed in conjunction with the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. There is a national quality infrastructure. And the Fiscal Incentives Act, a new fiscal framework introduced in 2014, provides for reduced customs and stamp duties and corporate income tax rates, as well as a list of items that can be brought into the island duty-free. These incentives are available to both recovery hotels and medical and wellness facilities. Global investors have seen the potential for medical tourism in Jamaica. International brand Hospiten built a $2.3 billion state-of-the-art facility in Montego Bay, St. James. Additionally, it's quite the norm to hear of medical missions happening in different parts of the island. The country has been ranked second on the list of most attractive countries for medical tourism based on a 2014 index. So why Jamaica? We already have an international global presence as a tourism destination. We do have a skilled workforce, excellent doctors, excellent dentists, excellent
excellent nurses. Our labor costs here are lower, significantly lower. The proximity to the United States cannot be ignored, and that's a given. Of course, we have our natural resources, so when we talk about wellness, tourism, our beaches, our spas that can be developed, advantages of course for a place like Jamaica to get engaged in health tourism, definitely good for the workforce and of course of the foreign exchange. <laughs> The government will continue to promote and facilitate investments in the very lucrative medical tourism sector. Therefore, health professionals and tourism stakeholders form coalitions to help develop Jamaica as a medical tourism destination. For more on Jamaica's growing medical tourism industry, contact Jampro. They're based on Trafalgar Road in New Kingston. Call them at 978-7755 or 978-3337. The media landscape is awash with commercials offering a variety of loans, but consumers be cautious about these seemingly attractive deals. Loan companies sometimes practice overlending to consumers and impose excessive fees and onerous contract terms. If you are seeking a loan, try to approach reputable organizations like banks and credit unions. Consider these points before you borrow. The purpose of the loan, the terms and conditions including the type of interest and the associated processing fees, the period for repayment and other non-interest related charges. If you think a loan offer is misleading or false, contact the Consumer Affairs Commission. Call 906-5425-906-8568 or 906-0813. They're located at 34 Trafalgar Road, Kingston 10. This past week, the country observed International Women's Day. A few days before that observation, a group of women gathered at Emancipation Park to empower each other. Coming up, Walking the Talk. Steady walks, leisurely strolls. In between the steps, women building each other. It's in observation of International Women's Day, so it either takes place on or near International Women's Day, which is, which is March 8th, as we know. So this year, it's globally, it's taking place on March 5th. And so in 57 countries across the world, women are walking, supporting each other in a mentoring relationship. It was a bright and early Saturday morning at Emancipation Park, 7 a.m. to be exact. That early on a Saturday, some persons were still resting releasing the work week load. But these women, some of them entrepreneurs, students, business executives and mothers, decided that it was important to delay rest and be on one accord with their fellow powerful females. Walkers were paired with mentors from Vital Voices, who as they walked, shared stories of work, entrepreneurship, love and motherhood, helping to empower. It was a joyous selfie occasion, but there was nothing selfish about it. I have been on my own as an independent um, female entrepreneur for a year. And when I say been on my own, I've been on my own. So today was a great opportunity to come out and see other female leaders, business owners, and just to feel a part of a network and to feel like um, there, there is hope. I'm not a morning person, so it was a challenge just getting out of bed this morning to be here. But it was a wonderful experience. One of the things that we spoke about was confidence and speaking up, because I usually don't speak up, but um, it's speaking up now. <laughs> Vital Voices is a Washington-based NGO that is focused on building women's capacity to lead in business, in NGOs, in politics, and just academia generally. So it's about helping women to lead. Rather than have people speak for us, we are saying we can speak for us. We can speak for ourselves. 
So rather than say, hey, hey, we will have good representatives who can speak on your behalf, we are saying choose a woman and have a woman present a woman's perspective. And women not only bring a woman's perspective, women speak for their children, so they're speaking for their girl children, their boy children, they're speaking for the elderly, elderly um, male relative, female relative. So women bring a lot of perspectives to the table. My challenge to you guys, I mean, I'm sure that the organizers are going to throw out a challenge, but my challenge to you guys is to stay in the group. Stay in the group. Um, we, as women, have a, there's a stigma surrounding women that we tear each other down, we don't give each other opportunities, we don't work well together. We, as women, are choosing to change the stigma that is associated with being women women in business and women in Jamaica, women in the world. We're changing that and I just want you guys to big up yourself, big up me too. So amazing how this world was made. I wonder if God is a woman. This is the Aedes aegypti mosquito that spreads the Zika, chikungunya and dengue viruses. Protect yourself from the bite of this mosquito. A message from the Ministry of Health. I say be careful what you teach your little children. Make sure I have something to hurt them. Mind what you're saying to my sister. She could be the next Prime Minister. Children in Jamaica constitute anyone who is under the age of 18 years. And so once you have a child who is under your care and supervision, we encourage you at the Office of the Children's Advocate to always know where your children are. It doesn't mean that you have to be there with them, but you certainly know who they're with, where they're going, and the purpose for being there. This is a key component in helping to establish some rules in terms of some ground rules and helping to guide your children towards responsible and sensible choices and also assisting you if something were to go wrong to know what is the first point of contact to assist your child. While you're not to look at everybody as a potential suspect, that you need to be very wary of adults, whether they're in positions of authority or not, that seek to want to have a very close relationship with your child. Somebody who wants to invite your child on an outing and it's just that adult and your child alone. Somebody who wants to take your child to a very special event to reward the child perhaps for some performance that the child would have done in an extracurricular activity or for academic uh, excellence. We encourage you to look at these situations very carefully and to determine whether or not it's an appropriate meeting or outing that this person is propositioning for your child. If you are enrolling your child in a daycare, ensure that you know something about the track record of that daycare. Ensure that the daycare has what we call an open door policy, which allows you to go in, see what's happening, observe how the workers there interact with the children, and know some of the ground rules that guide these interactions. If they're going on outings, whether it be school trips or otherwise, ensure that at some point, if, even if you can't go to all, you do attend some of them. So you get yourself integrated into the system and the culture of the school. For these tips and of course any other information that deals with children, that is anyone under 18 years, please feel free to contact the Office of the Children's Advocate. We're at 72 Harbour Street, downtown Kingston, and our numbers are 948-1134 or website www.oca.gov.jm Watch what you teach your little children Make sure I know something to hurt them Mind what you say to me sister Cause she could be the next prime minister Before we go, think on this Find a place inside where there's joy and the joy will burn out the pain for more information on the upcoming Grade 6 Achievement Test, click on our webpage, jis.gov.jm. We're also on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, so log on and stay in the know. In the meantime, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Thank you.